So we're continuing our exploration of over this 10 weeks of the embodied heart. And a big part of what that means to me is that we're exploring what it means to bring together these two ways of practicing, um, the practice of embodiment and the practice of heartfulness. And when I say these different ways to practice, I'm, I'm referring to um, a model that, that we use with Buddhist geeks called the six ways to meditate. And these are two of those six ways. We've got mindfulness, concentration, heartfulness, inquiry, embodiment, and awareness as the six ways. And part of the six ways is, is sort of about recognizing that there are these distinctions that can be made in terms of um, types of practices. And that it's useful to make those distinctions so that we can see that some kinds of practices have different aims than others. At the same time, uh, what this model is really about is also about differentiating and then integrating those different ways. So we can, we can see that there are these different ways and we can practice techniques that are explicitly about heartfulness or explicitly about embodiment or mindfulness. But what's becomes more interesting, I'd, I'd suggest, as we deepen in our practice, is looking at combining those different ways together and to see what comes out of, of different kinds of combinations um, in practice. And ultimately, what I think becomes the most interesting thing is when, when the distinctions themselves uh, dissolve and we discover uh, that there's just one way to meditate. and. Um, and then, of course, that itself will, will go through phases. <laughs> Sometimes it's true. There's just one way to meditate. And then other times we have to kind of remember, oh, actually, no, there's this way to meditate. That, and I need that because I've been missing it. <laughs> uh, and we suddenly find ourselves again working with different ways. So, so there is a paradox here in the way that we like, approach meditation. There's both difference and diversity and sameness and unity, um, both and so here we're looking at combining really these two of these ways, um, embodiment and heartfulness. And, 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 and how we currently define those practices for, for the context of, of Buddhist geeks is embodiment is the practice of inhabiting the body. That's the practice of embodiment. Um, and heartfulness is the practice for us of inclining the mind toward opening the heart, inclining the mind toward opening the heart. But embodiment, you know, what exactly is embodiment and how are we differentiating that in particular from mindfulness of the body? You know, because with mindfulness practice, everything is included in mindfulness. Um, but there's something to me that's distinct about a practice whose aim is inhabiting the body than mindfulness, which I define as noticing what you're sensing in real time. Um, so here, uh, I think there's a great description of this by a teacher named Judith Blackstone in her book, Trauma and the Unbound Body, where she says, inhabiting the body is not the same as being aware of the body. It's not a top-down experience. Inhabiting the body means that we live within our body, that we're present throughout the whole internal space of the body. It means that we feel that we are made of consciousness everywhere in our body. And as I shared before, I, I practice mindfulness in a very disembodied way for many years. I think in part because of my own, the, the wounds and the stuff that I carried in my body that I couldn't feel uh, safely. And also in part because of the way that the tradition itself understands mindfulness and the way it's transmitted in the early Buddhist tradition, there is, I think, a very strong flavor of disembodiment in the tradition. Mm -hmm. Though not all teachers hold it that way, um, certainly. Um, and then just also my own misunderstanding <laughs> uh, of, of what, what I'm doing. So, so the practice of, of embodiment, again, is, it's about relearning how to inhabit the full space of the body. And for some of us, this is harder th than for others. Um, not all of these different ways are as easily accessible for us. Uh, some of them are very easily accessible and others are very difficult, um, which is also why it's helpful to notice that there are these different ways, because then we can see how, you know, we can almost use it as a, 
as a kind of litmus test for where we are um, to see what we're comfortable with and what we're still, we have a lot more to learn about. Uh, heartfulness practice, you know, again, or, or traditionally be called metta practice or um, Brahma Vihara practice in the Buddhist context of sometimes they're called the sublime attitudes or the, the place where the, where divinity abides. Um, these beautiful states of mind, like compassion, like joy, like equanimity. Um, heartfulness for us is inclined is about inclining the mind toward opening the heart. Um, and, and here the inclining part is really important because heartfulness isn't the practice of being in an open heart. I mean, sometimes it is, <laughs> but oftentimes that's what we're working toward. And we incline in that direction. That is, we set the GPS coordinates of the heart and we move in that direction. But what moving in that direction often looks like is actually working with all of the obstacles to that open heartedness. It's almost like we're inviting in the opposite of what's open in our experience. Um, so we want to be joyful. Okay, good. That's nice. <laughs> well, how do you feel about depression? <laughs> <laughs> because that might come up, you know, as you incline toward joy. Um, you want to be compassionate? Great. Well, uh, what about uh, self-centeredness? You know, what about all of the ways in which you're self-absorbed or narcissistic? Because being compassionate, um, to truly be able to be compassionate, we have to, um, you know, we have to be able to actually tune into the suffering of ourselves or, the, or others uh, without being self-absorbed. So to me, inclining the mind toward the open, toward opening the heart is about also working with all the, the states that feel like they're getting in the way of the open heart. And really, truly is about the only way through those states is to open our hearts to them. So they're actually an invitation to a deeper opening. They're not a problem or a mistake, even though it seems that way when we think we should already have an open heart. Uh, or that we're doing the practice wrong if we don't feel open. Um, no, that's not that's not what this is about. So, what happens when you bring these two together? You know, in, inhabiting the body and inclining the mind toward opening the heart. Well, I think it's something like embodied heartfulness is the practice of inclining the mind toward opening the heart in the body. So we're 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 using our our mind our intention to incline toward these states of heartfulness, toward opening the heart in the body, not just also in an abstract sense, but in a, in a really grounded and embodied sense. And this brings up, I think, another model that, that often shows up. I believe the first time I saw this was in the um, Enneagram work, um, but, but it's sometimes called the three centers of knowing or three centers of intelligence. And here we could say, well, there's the head center, there's the heart center, and then there's the body center, which you could also see as like the, the gut or the stomach, the, the gut brain, what my son calls the love brain and, you know, the mind brain. Um, and um, the idea here is that we can look at the body in, in much the same way that traditions have been doing for thousands of years. And we can see that there's a correlation between what it is that we're trying to cultivate or develop in our consciousness and these physical locations in the body. You know, the Indian chakra system is a good example of this. This is like a much simpler, more boiled down version of like the chakras. It's like there, there are these places or these centers in our body that correspond with say awareness or with love or with embodiment. And so uh, in this practice, I'd say what's unique about embodied heartfulness is that we're using the head center to incline toward opening the heart in the body. So it's really about, it's an integral practice of including all of these centers of knowing and, and having them all be active at once so that we're knowing with our full being um, and we're inclining toward uh, these states with our full being, you know, with our whole being active, nothing left out. 